time of death yet? Time of death was between 1 and 2 a.m. 1 and 2 a.m., huh? Approximately 17 hours ago. Okay, thanks. Officer O'Malley, check to see if Time of death. You hear this announced in detective shows all the time. It often plays an important role in solving the crime. But how do investigators actually figure out the time of death? Even when there are no witnesses or apparent clues, they still manage to do it. How? Cut, cut, cut. We saw the corpse move. Chris, you have to stay perfectly still. Sorry. Okay, let's try another one. And this time, don't move a muscle. And actually, Peter, I'd like you, you to... Uh, so, of course, Willie really had been murdered. To figure out when he died, you'd start with the most obvious. What's the first thing you notice about a corpse? It's cold and stiff. The stiffness, also known as rigor mortis, is similar to the stiff, sore feeling you get in your muscles after too much exercise. When you overdo it at the gym, a chemical called lactic acid builds up in your muscles. Lactic acid is kind of like this garbage. It's the waste left behind after your muscles do all that hard work. It gets in the way of the muscle fibers and makes it harder for them to move. That's why you feel stiff and sore. Normally, this is not a big problem because the oxygen in your blood eventually gets rid of the mess. Your blood acts kind of like a garbage collector. When you die, however, your muscles continue to produce lactic acid for a short time. But your heart stops and no longer pumps the blood that contains the oxygen that gets rid of the lactic acid. It's like the garbage collectors have gone on strike. The lactic acid just piles up, causing your muscles to get stiffer and stiffer. After about 12 hours, you're as stiff as a board. This is why dead bodies are often referred to as stiffs. Investigators can get a general idea of the time of death just by examining the stiffness of the corpse. It's a rough estimate, though, because the rate at which rigor mortis can set in can vary from person to person. To be more accurate, you need more clues. Yeah, I remember this guy. He was here Tuesday. Tuesday? What time? Around 1 o'clock. 1 p.m., you sure? Yeah, 1 o'clock. You're absolutely certain it was 1 p.m.? Yeah, yeah, he had a cheeseburger. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Just bring me the same. Thank you. So why am I in this restaurant? So why am I in this restaurant trying to find out when Chris had his last meal? Well, imagine the cheeseburger that Chris ate for lunch is a building. And imagine these demolition workers are the chemicals in Chris's digestive system, slowly, brick by brick, breaking down his meal. This breakdown happens at a known rate. On average, it takes about 30 hours to completely break down and digest a meal. But when you die, all digestion comes to an abrupt halt. Your food just sits there partially digested. Investigators will often remove the stomach and intestines of the corpse to discover how much digestion has taken place. Whoa, what are you doing with that? Uh, relax, I wasn't going to do anything. Cut, cut, cut. Chris, you're supposed to be a corpse. What do corpses do? I know, I know. Lie still. This time, okay, okay. Let's just say the investigators removed and examined the contents of Chris's stomach and intestines. Now, using their knowledge of the digestive process, they can estimate how many hours it took for that amount of digestion to happen. So if approximately 12 hours of digestion took place, and the last meal was consumed at 1 p.m., like the waiter said, then digestion stopped the following morning. This is also the time of death. Of course, this is all academic if you can't find out the time the victim ate his last meal. 2.30. Or maybe it was closer to noon. No, it was definitely 1 o'clock. But I think it was Wednesday, not Tuesday. So what do you do if this happens? One of the best ways to determine time of death is to find eyewitnesses to the crime. But in this case, there weren't any. Or were there? Actually, there was an eyewitness who saw everything. But this is definitely not your...
your typical witness. I'm talking about a fly. Unfortunately, you can't ask it what it saw, but there are other ways it can tell you about the time of death. You may think that insects spend their days buzzing around just to annoy you. But what many of them are doing is searching for a good place to lay their eggs. The eggs hatch into larvae, which need moisture and warmth to survive. What are you so upset about? Your nose, mouth, and ears make the perfect nurseries. But insects don't normally get the chance to lay eggs in you because you're quick to shoo them away. But you can't shoo them away when you're dead. Within minutes or even seconds after taking your last breath, they lay eggs in any orifice or open wound they can find. <laughs> Sorry. So how can insect eggs possibly help you determine time of death? Well, all insects have several distinct stages in their growth cycles. The blowfly shown here has four. Egg, larva, pupa, and adult. Each stage lasts a specific length of time. If you're familiar with the life cycles of the insects that invade a corpse, you can determine time of death. If you find a blowfly larva, for example, you know the eggs were laid there at least five days ago. And that's when time of death would have occurred. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> That's it. I'm done. Cut, cut, cut. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, I mean, thermometers up my butt, fly eggs up my nose. You try to slice me open. I'm done. Get yourself another corpse. Fly. But, 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 what's bugging him? I don't know. Guess that's a wrap. If you're familiar with the life cycles of the insects that invade a corpse, you can determine time of death. For example, if you find a fluff, 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 if you find a blowfly pupa, you know the eggs were laid there. That's that. <laughs>